Let's hear it for the Lord this morning. Put your hands together. Give the Lord some glory in the house. Can we have the shout of a king in the house this morning? Victory is on his way. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome to Action Chapel's Good Friday service, where we are still looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And the Bible says, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Can I announce to somebody this morning that for the joy of your salvation, Jesus endured the cross. For the joy of your deliverance, Jesus endured the cross. For the joy of your triumph and victory over all the works of the enemy, Jesus endured the cross. Put your hands together and give Yeshua a clap offering in the house this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I bring the greetings and the blessings of His Eminence, the Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. He extends his love upon the house and the assurance that his thoughts and his prayers are with us today. Amen. And for all our followers and members watching us online, we extend the courtesies and the blessing of this house unto you. Get in touch with your friends and family and encourage them to be a part of today's Good Friday service. How many of you have been blessed so far by the program? Put your hands together and let's give God an amazing, amazing, amazing. You know, one of the things that we really want to be keyed up and be situated in our heart to receive something this morning. And we want to pray that anything that would distract you and anything that would take your mind and your spirit off God's engagement today, we overthrow in the name of Jesus. Say an amen. You know, on uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before, uh, our guest speaker was ministering, led by the Holy Spirit, and he stood right there in the center area and said, there is somebody within this geographical area, and God is, wants to minister to the person. And uh, he said, I know the person is right here, but you see, the person was so distracted by what they were engaging that they didn't connect. Yesterday after the service, he showed up and he says, I'm the one you were talking about. I declare over you this morning, anything that would distract you and take your mind off the impartation God has for you today, you will not miss God's blessing. I said, you will not miss God's blessing. The fullness of the privilege of Easter shall be your portion. You will walk in redemptive rights. You will walk in redemptive privileges. Put your hands together and give the Lord some glory in the house today. Nothing will distract you. Nothing will rob you of the moment. Hallelujah. Once again, we are blessed to have with us a man who needs no introduction. A man who is a part of our family. A man who has a true heart, not only for the kingdom of God, for this house in particular. We have been blessed to have him since Wednesday, and it is our God-given privilege and honor to welcome again the ministry, the message, the messenger, Bishop Michael Pitts, all the way from Toledo, Ohio, to be a blessing unto us. Come on, give it up to the Lord for the blessing of his heaven. Amen. Happy Good Friday to you. It's so good to see you. Please lift your hands all over the building. I declare on this Good Friday special blessings on every heart, on every mind, on every person under the sound of my voice. May the blessing of the Lord rise upon you. May you be strengthened in the power of his might. And you may, you know the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. To you and to your children and to your children's children and to as many as the Lord your God shall call. Amen, amen. Put your hands together, everyone. We're so glad to see you today. So happy to be with you. You may be seated. You may be seated on this wonderful and awesome Good Friday. It is so good to be with you. And my wife also sends her greetings from America. And uh, maybe on Easter Sunday we'll do a video 
or something out here so we can send it back to everyone who is in America. And uh, they're so excited. This November will be my wife and I's 40th year anniversary together for 40 years. And uh, she's home. She's home now, helping our son-in-law and daughter in the uh, Easter celebration weekend back home. And then she's going to be watching our three grandchildren, three boys. She's going to be watching them for a week while our son-in-law and daughter go away for a week. So I told her, I said, "Ooh, I should go to Ghana." She's <laughs> watching them three boys. They are eight, five, and three. And they are busy. They are busy. They are busy. <clears throat> Archbishop once uh, sends his love and greetings to you. And I'm so honored to be standing here and always honored that you allow me to be a part of your family and to let me feel as if every time I come to Ghana, I feel as if I am home. I am home with friends and family. So thank you for letting me feel that way. And even if you don't feel that way, just act like you feel that way. It makes me feel okay because <laughs> and so I'm so happy and I, and I want to I want to speak something to you here in just a moment, just for a little bit uh, because it is Good Friday. And our pastors back home were asking me in different places of the world, they were asking me, how do you preach something new on Good Friday and Easter because we've been preaching them for so many years. And I say to them, you don't have to preach something new. The story just has to be told again. Year after year, we have to tell the story again. Because what we don't repeat, we don't remember. And it needs to be said. So that's what I'm going to do today, if you'll allow me to, uh, with you just for the next few minutes. I want to talk to you about Good Friday. And I'm going to John's Gospel, John's Gospel, chapter 19. And verse number 30 is where I want to begin. John's Gospel, chapter 19, and verse number 30. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. I want to talk to you uh, uh, about this just for a little bit. Jesus said, it is finished. This is Good Friday. Easter is coming. Resurrection Day is on Sunday. But before we celebrate resurrection, we have to deal with Good Friday. Jesus' life is filled with uneasy and complicated relationships. Jesus had an uneasy and a complicated relationship with his earthly family. To me, to me, Mary is the hero in this story. Mary is the hero that holds that family together, and she is more linked to Jesus' life than any other human being, in my mind. In my mind, she is more linked with him because of the controversy of his birth, the criticism of his birth, the disrespect, the dishonor, and the rejection that Jesus would face, Mary is more linked with that than any other human being. Mary keeps the sayings of Jesus in her heart. It is Mary that will be able to get Jesus to perform his first miracle, turning the water into wine. It is Mary that goes with him all the way to the cross. We don't pray to Mary, we don't worship Mary, but we honor her because God said she was blessed and highly favored. And she teaches us that favor doesn't always look the way we think it's going to look. Her favor is what caused her to be talked about. Her favor was what caused her to be criticized. Her favor was caused her to be looked down upon for a long time in her life. But because she was blessed and highly favored, God gave her stewardship and custodial rights to his word that would come into the earth. Jesus had an interesting relationship with Joseph. Joseph is a guy who teaches us the value of remaining faithful even when you don't understand it. Joseph, Joseph has a difficult role in the life of Jesus, but he stands there. When Jesus is in the temple at 12 years of age, 
Joseph goes to look for him, and Jesus says, I must be about my father's business. And we never hear from Joseph again. There are no words recorded from Joseph in the Bible. And after Jesus being at 12, we never hear from Joseph or about Joseph again. I don't know what happened to him, but Joseph is a complicated relationship. Jesus has an uneasy and a complicated relationship with his earthly siblings. Jesus has four brothers and two sisters, you know. And they don't really track with him and believe in him while he's alive. As a matter of fact, in Mark's gospel, it is mentioned that while Jesus is teaching in the temple, that they say to him, are not your brothers and your sisters? They came to help pull him out of the temple because he was causing too much controversy. And the reason I point this out is that when you follow Jesus, it sometimes produces uneasy, complicated relationships, even with the people in our own families. Sometimes when a person is first born again, they have more zeal than wisdom. And in your attempt to get all of your family members saved, you become the preacher to the whole family until you complicate the relationships because uh, you're putting everybody into hell if they don't get saved the next day and you're pointing out people's sins and condemning. Sometimes you have more zeal than wisdom. I don't know how many of you have siblings in the way that I do. I have an older brother, I have a younger brother, I have a younger sister. And whenever you have sibling relationships, it's, it's complicated if one or two of them have gifts or uh, abilities in areas that are so much more pronounced than the others. It's hard to live up to that. My younger brother is kind of like a little brainiac genius person who became the youngest law professor at the largest law firm in New York City. Straight A, only one of us kids to go all the way through university. My older brother was class president. Never missed a day of school. I'm in the middle of that. That's difficult to live up to when I was in school. Can you imagine what it was like if your brother is the son of God? That's difficult to live up to. It's a, it's a difficult shadow to be in when everywhere you go, everybody's talking about Jesus. There's, there's something about that familiarity. Do you know that James, the brother of Jesus, never became converted until after the resurrection? Hmm. After the resurrection, Jesus appears and goes to visit his brother James, who then becomes converted and becomes a leader at the church in Jerusalem. I just want to tell you, following Jesus produces complicated relationships. Jesus had a complicated relationship with his disciples. Have you ever noticed that Jesus' disciples, his words to them are always, there's a lot of things like, how long do I have to be with you? How many times have I told you? Where is your faith? Could you not tarry with me for one hour? Verily, verily, I say, uh, Jesus' disciples are always in this relationship of getting it part of the time, not getting it another part of the time. That also brings comfort to me because it lets me know that to be a disciple of Jesus doesn't mean you always have it figured out. It means that you're just still walking. Jesus had a complicated relationship with the city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the place of at least 10 significant events of Jesus' life. One week ago, we celebrated Palm Sunday when the city of Jerusalem cried Hosanna. And Jesus would weep over that same city. And one week after crying Hosanna, the same city of Jerusalem would cry, crucify. Jesus has a complicated relationship. Here's why. In part because Jesus was never 
what someone else wanted him to be. He was always who God purposed him to be. This is the difficult part. When he comes to Jerusalem, they think he's coming in as a political king with a fanfare to take over the political parties and establish an earthly kingdom. And yet here he comes riding on a donkey, saying to them, my kingdom is not of this world. They didn't understand that Jesus riding on a donkey was symbolic of surrender. It was, um, for, for those of you that are history people, it was something that was established by Alexander the Great. Because when kings during that, during that time always rode Arabian horses, Alexander the Great established a principle that when he took over an area, their king had to come in on a donkey if they surrendered. Jesus borrowed from that, and rather than coming in on an Arabian horse, Jesus comes into the city on a donkey because what they thought he was coming to be crowned, Jesus knew he was coming to be crucified. And Jesus came surrendering to the will of God, not as a lion, but as a lamb. Jesus comes in as the lamb. Behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. It kind of makes sense to us if we walk it out. We walk it out in the fact that when Adam and Eve transgressed the law of God, that they sought to cover their nakedness and their sin. They sought to cover themselves with fig leaves. And God sees the ridiculousness of it. And the Bible said, and God made for them. Listen to the words. God made for for them a covering of skin, which implies that God had sacrificed the blood of an animal to get the skin so that he could cover their sin. It is the desire of man always to cover his own skin. Adam used fig leaves. Fig leaves come from trees. Trees are something that grows from the ground. Anything that grows from the ground is called produce. And God is not looking for something that you can produce. He's looking for something that comes from a womb that has blood. And when man tries to produce his own righteousness and cover his own sin, God rejects it and finds something that is alive because the principle of substitution is that the innocent has to die for the guilty and where there's no shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So God goes and finds an innocent animal to cover the guilty Adam. And now we find out that God is establishing something that we will see again in the life of Abraham. And God says to Abraham, take your son to the mountain and put him on the altar. Not Ishmael, but take Isaac. Take the one that you love. Watch the language that we're hearing. Now we're hearing the language. It can't just be any sacrifice. It has to be a son. And it can't just be any son. It has to be the one that you love. And when they get there, we find out that there is a ram or a lamb caught in the thorns. And it becomes a sacrifice. Now it's building. It was a lamb for a man. And now we come to Exodus. Can I preach a little while here? When we get to Exodus, God is bringing them out of ten mighty plagues. Nine of them. The last one is the death of the firstborn. And these, these are the words that he gives us. Exodus chapter 12. Help me. Exodus chapter 12, verse number 12. It reads like this. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite all of the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Verse 13, and the blood shall be to you for a token 
upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. God gave them the pattern. Now we're connecting the dots over time. The same God that shed the innocent blood of an animal and gave the skins to cover Adam and Eve is the same God that called for Isaac, the promised son, the one who Abraham loved to go to the mountain. And God provided himself a sacrifice, cut in the thorns is the same God that now says to them, the destroyer is coming through the land of Egypt. And now I'm going to give you the principle that will be for ever for you a Passover today on this Good Friday. Understand that Jesus, the Lamb of God, came to be crucified at Passover. And Passover goes all the way back to Egypt. When he says, I'm going to bring you out, the destroyer is going through the land. Here's what you are to do. Every person, every man will take a lamb, a lamb for a house, a lamb for a house. And when you take the lamb for your house, it can't be any lamb. It has to be a spotless lamb, a spotless lamb for every house. And when you get the spotless lamb, take the blood of the lamb and put it over the doorpost of your house and when I see the blood did you hear that when I see the blood when I see the blood I will pass over the door of your house and not allow the destroyer to come into your house and God says this is what you will do you're going to get under the blood and you're going to get in the house. And when you get in the house, shut the door of your house. And whatever you do, don't go out of the house, but stay under the blood and stay in the house. Put your hand on someone and tell them, stay under the blood and stay in the house. Tell somebody else, stay under the blood. Watch now, watch now. God is not looking at who's in the house. Huh. We know that when they come out of Egypt, the Bible clearly states that they came, a mixed came out. That means some Egyptians left with the Hebrews. A mixed multitude. There had to be some of the Egyptians that were tired of all of these plagues that understood the way of the Hebrews, and when they saw them all putting blood on the doorpost of their house, said to them, what are you doing? And they told them, this is what's going to happen tonight. Whoever's not under the blood and not in the house is going to be destroyed. That there had to be Egyptians. Can I come over to your house to eat tonight? I like lamb. Watch. The Bible is clear. God did not say, when I see you. He did not say, when I see Hebrews. He did not see, say, when I see Jew, black skin, white skin. He did not say, when I see male or when I see female. He said, when I see the blood. When I see the blood, I'm going to pass over the door of the house. Is under the blood and in the house house is going to be preserved into you you I'm looking for I'm glad on this good Friday that I'm under the blood and I said I'm glad on this good Friday that I'm under the blood and I'm in the house this becomes the annual feast, one of the annual feasts. Every year you shall celebrate Passover. Remind the past over your house, not because of who you are, but because I saw the blood. And so, of course, word of what has gone on in Egypt spreads throughout the known world. And by the time they come to Jericho, which is the first city in the promised land. By the time they get there, we find out that 
they send spies into the land to Rahab, the harlot's house. She hides them. We find out later from her words that the people of the city of Jericho were ready to give up because they had heard what happened in Egypt. Their word went out. And now when Rahab realizes they're going to take over this city and the walls are coming down, she connects back to what preserved them, which is the blood. But she doesn't have a lamb to sacrifice. And she doesn't have physical blood. So they tell her, get the closest thing you got to remind God of the blood. She said, the only thing I have is a red rope. I got a red scarlet cord. And they say when you tie that red cord it's going to remind God of the Passover and you get your fan you want me to read it to you it's out of the book of Joshua chapter 2 help me find it it's the same uh, the verse Joshua chapter 2 verse number 17 18 come on behold with the land you shall bind this line of scarlet thread in the wind that that you let us down by and you shall bring in your father and your mother and your brothers household bring them to you Remember 19 and it shall be that who out of the doors of your house into the street his blood shall be upon his head and we will be guiltless but who shall be with you in the house his blood shall be on our head and our hand upon him. Do you, he's, he said, all you've got to do, go get your family. Go get everybody that you want. Go get everybody that you know. And bring them in the house and stay under the blood. And no matter what you see, tell them, no matter what you see, stay in the house house and stay under the blood. Do you guys remember those that she get? She doesn't have time to everyone. She just tells them to try the house. And on top of Jericho, it was like an earthquake. Those began to shake and people began off of the walls and out of the houses and they could look out of the windows at Rahab's house and see walls falling and Rahab says it doesn't matter what it looks like it doesn't matter what it feels like whatever you stay under the blood and stay in the house it may be shaking around you but stay under the blood and stay in this house I came to Africa to tell you on this good Friday everything may be shaking around you but grab your family get under the blood and get in the house and no matter what's happening around you if you stay under the blood and stay in the house God will preserve you <laughs> hallelujah I said hallelujah and Rahab and her family are preserved to the place that she ends up evidently marrying a good Hebrew somebody. Because right in the middle of the list of the genealogy of Jesus is Rahab, who is no longer a harlot. They said, go to the, Rah go to the harlot's house and bring the woman out of the house of the harlot. Oh my God, there's a woman in that harlot's house. And they brought her, she went in as a harlot, but she came out as a woman. And ends up being the great, 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 great grandmother of Jesus because she knew how to get under the blood and stay in the house. What started off as a lamb for a man became a lamb for a house and now on the day of atonement it becomes a lamb for a nation. During Passover on the day of atonement they would bring a lamb and the lamb had to be looked at to make sure it was a spotless lamb. On the Day of Atonement, one day a year, only the high priest could go into the Holy of Holies and, and offer up the lamb. And they, could, they would take a lamb, this is where we get the term scapegoat from, for somebody to be a scapegoat. They would take their hands, they would sacrifice the lamb, they would put their hands, the priest would, and symbolically transfer the transgressions and the sins 
of the people onto the lamb. And the lamb then was released outside of the gates. <laughs> and the lamb then would die outside the gates for the sin of the people. What started with Adam, a sacrifice for a man, moved unto Abraham, a sacrifice for a boy, which moved into Egypt, a sacrifice for a house. Continued with Rahab, a sacrifice for a house. Now on the Day of Atonement is a sacrifice for the nation. The whole nation on the Day of At one minute. Atonement. Now Jesus comes walking in the face of the earth. They don't know he's the Lamb of God. He's the Lamb of God. Walking in the face of the earth sees him and says, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. What else? And the Lamb of the world. At Passover, watch me now, is examining a lamb. A lamb is brought to the high priest. And the high priest over here on Passover, what we're calling Good Friday now, he's running his fingers through the wool. Turning over the lamb, looking while this is going on in the temple. Over here in the court pilot is a lamb being. Pilot is turning the life of Jesus, running his fingers through the life of Jesus, trying to find blemish, trying to find sin, trying Jesus. Jesus, the Lamb of God, is being investigated in this place. While over here in the temple, the Lord, the Lamb, as a looks, declares it to be a spotless Lamb worthy of being sacrificed. The Lamb of God stands and Pilate is a spotless Lamb standing before Pilate. Now the Bible is clear. Like a Lamb led to the slaughter, he opened not up his mouth. And by the will of God, reaches back to Abraham's ram caught in the thorns and takes the crown of thorns and it's put up on his head. Oh, reaching back to his and his to Rahab and to those that came through the Passover, he said, When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Can I tell you something? That when they were bringing the lamb to be examined by the high priest, they would walk up to the high priest with the lamb. Are you ready? What I came to tell you was it was always the lamb that was being observed, not the person bringing the lamb. They brought the lamb. All we have to know is, is, the, is this a spotless lamb, not a spotless person, because you are not the one that is the sacrifice. The lamb is the sacrifice. So the person bringing the lamb is not examined. Only the lamb is examined. I'm glad when we come before God today, we don't come as God looking at us through us, but he sees me through the blood. And he says that when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Jesus now is upon the cross, hanging between heaven and earth, crucified between two thieves. Maybe I'll talk about that Sunday because Sunday's on the way. Sunday we will celebrate resurrection, but today we have to remember the cross. We have to remember the cross because it is the blood of the Lamb that was shed on our behalf. And when Jesus hung upon that cross, suspended between heaven and earth, crucified between two thieves, they gave him the vinegar after the nails in his hands and his feet and his side and the stripes upon his back and the crown of thorns upon his head. And when they gave him the vinegar, Jesus said, it is finished. 
People may not understand why the cross means something to us, but without a cross, there is no resurrection. Without a sacrifice, there is no celebration. Without a death and a burial, there can be no resurrection. And it was on that cross that the words of God would go like this. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, the innocent once again dying for the guilty. It is the words of Scripture that said he made him to be sin, who knew no sin. Jesus did not sin, but was made sin. He was not made to sin. He was made sin. Though he had not sinned, he was made sin so that we could be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So Jesus did no wrong but was made wrong so we who had done no right could be made right. Jesus didn't sin to become sin any more than you did righteous to be made righteous. It's because of what the blood did for us on the cross of Calvary. God says, when I see you, if I see the blood over you, I will pass over you. That's why the cross means a lot to us. A lot of times when I would go to church as a young person, they would say that. They'd say, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. And it was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. And it was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all. Sometimes when I think about the hymns, I try to remember and see if I can remember all the verses, you know. But I know there was a verse that went something like, Was it for the things that I had done? He groaned up on that tree. Amazing. Pity and grace untold and love beyond degree. Something like that, huh? And at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight And now I am happy all the day So when I got a little older in church, when I was a teenager They asked me when I was a teenager, they said, would you sing that song? And so I put a little band together We only had like 200 maybe people in our church and so I, I put a little band together, and uh, they let me lead it on a Sunday night. I'm not a singer. I mean, I can, I can lead a chorus, but like, I'm not like, like these people, singers, singers. And, but I put a little band together, and so I put it a little bit more rhythm to it, and we started singing it like this. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart, they rolled away. And it was there by faith 
I receive my sight and now I am happy all the day. Come on, you try it. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart, they rolled away. It was there, it was there by faith. I receive my sight and now I am. Come on, let's let the band, let the band play it a little bit. Come on. There you go. Woo! It's Good Friday, everybody. Play it again. Everybody run to somebody. Tell them stay under the blood. Come on. Play again. Come on. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Thank God for the cross. Thank God for his sacrifice. Come on, everybody, help me one time. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burdens of my heart, they rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. everybody. Happy Good Friday. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Woo. Give God praise. Yay. Hey, Yamaha. Sing it again. I am happy all the day. Your children are safe. Your possessions are safe because you are under the blood and you are in the house. I declare over you no destroyer can come into your family because you are under the blood and you are in the house. Tell somebody I'm under the blood and I'm in the house. I'm under the blood and I'm in the house. It may not look like everything is okay, but I'm somewhere in my future, and I look much better than I look right now. I'm somewhere in my future, and I look much better than I look right now. I'm somewhere in my future, and I look much better than I look right now. I'm somewhere in my future, and I look much better than I look right now. I'm in my future. And I look much better than I look right now. I'm somewhere. And I look much better than I look right now. I'm somewhere. Listen, listen, listen. Say to the mountain, to the mountain, say to the mountain, move. Say to the mountain, to the mountain, say to the mountain, move. Say to the mountain, to the mountain, say to the mountain, move. Say to the mountain, to the mountain, I am somewhere in my future, and I look much better than I look right now. 
in my future and I look much better than I look right. I'm somewhere in my future and I look much better than I look right now. I'm somewhere in my future. Say to the mountain, say to the mountain, to the mountain, say to the mountain. Say to the mountain, to the mountain, say to the mountain. Say to the mountain, to the mountain, say to the mountain. Say to the mountain, to the mountain, say to the mountain. I am somewhere in my future, and I look much better than I look right now. I'm somewhere. stay under the blood and stay in the house oh come on tell three people stay under the blood and stay down the put your hands together let's thank God for the life of Bishop Michael Pete hallelujah what a word it's all about the cross it's all about the lamb it's on who is carrying the lamb, but the lamb. Get it one more time and give God praise. It's all about the blood. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What an awesome God we serve. You want to respond to the word briefly? Pray for yourself. You want to stay in the house? You want to stay under the blood? It doesn't matter what is going on around. It doesn't matter what is going on in the community. You want to stay under the blood and you want to stay in the house. Say, pray, God, help me to stay in the house and to stay under the blood. Just pray. Talk to the Lord briefly. Talk to the Lord about your life. Talk to the Lord about your family. You cannot afford to go out of the house, and you cannot afford to leave the covering of the blood. You must stay in the house, and you must be under the blood. That is where our victory is secured. That is where the victory is guaranteed. That is where our redemption is guaranteed. Hallelujah. We give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you glory, Heavenly Father. For surely you have done great and mighty things. And we are confident that you who have begun this good work will perfect it. Will perfect it. Will perfect it in and through our lives. And none of us shall be denied that which belongs to us. In Jesus' mighty name, put your hands together and give God praise. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the wonderful presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus paid the price. He paid it for us. Amen. You know, in school, they used to, we used to sing songs. He paid the debt he did not owe. I owe the debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash some sin away. Now I can sing a brand new song. Amazing grace, Christ Jesus paid the debt I could never pay. Oh yes, He paid the debt He did not owe. I owe the debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. Give him praise for paying the debt on our behalf. Amen. Hallelujah. It's time for tithe. It's time for offering. We want to show this good and awesome, great and mighty God 
gratitude for what he has done for us. We cannot pay him back. We cannot repay him for what he has done, but we can show him some gratitude. Hallelujah. This morning you want to come forward with your tithe. Remember here, men who die receive tithe, but God who lives forever is the one who keeps the record and the account. And wherever you are, you want to lift up a thanksgiving offering, a thanksgiving offering unto the Lord. If you're online or you are in-house but want to give electronically, the details are on your screen. So lift up your seed, lift up your offering, and let us pray. Can you please stand? You've been sitting for a while. Can you please stand, lift up your offering as we pray? Come forward with your tithe. You have a special vow you want to honor the Lord with. You can step forward also. Speak over your tithe. Pray over your seed. Pray over your offering. Talk to the Lord briefly about the seed in your hand. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, for the gift of life. Thank you for keeping us alive. Thank you for the many wonderful things you've done in our lives and the great plans you have for us. We are alive because you made it possible. We acknowledge you as the source of every good thing we have. And this morning, oh God, we stand before you in gratitude, honoring you for your faithfulness. We bring, oh God, our thanksgiving offerings unto you in faith, knowing that you have power to do all things. As we sow our seed, let our harvest be guaranteed. Let the heavens be opened over us. Let your blessing, O oh God, come upon us in a new and a living way. Let every embargo be lifted. Let all restrictions be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Let, O oh God, your glory be revealed in everything we do. Bless us, bless the work of our hands, and make a way for us. By our tithe, we ask that you will rebuke every devourer and waster. And let every siphoning spirit be arrested that that which belongs to us will come without fail. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, for you will do great and mighty things, even beyond our expectation, because you are God, and because we ask it in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Please drop your tithe on the altar, any special seed on the altar, or in the drop boxes around the altar. And may your miracle be released without fail, even as you sow your seed this morning, may the heavens be open, may the floodgates fling open on your behalf, and may God blow your mind in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's welcome the choir as we give.
As some of you, if dancing was required for victory, eh, you will never get victory. <laughs> Hallelujah. If it was a requirement to make heaven, some of you, when they say stand, then you sit. When they say dance, then you fold your hands. Hey! But thank God that the blood has answered for all of us. So whether you can dance or you cannot dance, whether you have a victory dance or you don't know what victory means, the victory has been won for you. Put your hands together and give him praise. Shall we please stand? Shall we please stand? Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 12, verses 12 and 13. He said the angel of death was going to come into town. It was going to pass through the whole nation of Egypt. He said, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that this night. And will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Then he said, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of of Egypt. Any plague, any trouble, any disaster, any angel of destruction that has been deployed and released in your community, in your family, today we decree and declare it shall pass over you. By the word of the Lord, we command Passover. Say, I decree according to the word of the Lord, let the angel of death Pass over me, pass over my family, pass over my children, pass over my loved ones. Let trouble, let plagues, let disaster, let shame, let failure pass over me, pass over my family, pass over my children, pass over my loved ones. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice, clap your hands, command the Passover. Command it, command it, command it. Come on and pass over. Let evil pass over you. Let evil pass over your children. Let evil pass over your loved ones. Lift up your voice. Overthrow and overturn every projection of evil. Overturn it. Overturn it. Overturn it. Command it to pass over in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice. Clap your hands. Issue the command. Lunamawata Sire. By the power of the finished work of Jesus, by the authority of the word of God, let evil pass over you. Let death pass over you. Let shame pass over you. Let failure pass over you. Every demonic plague deployed and released in your community with decree according to the word of the Lord. Let it pass over. 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 In Jesus' mighty name. Any projection of evil. You see, the enemy is a counterfeiter of everything God does. God deployed an angel of death. Any evil personality the enemy has released to take people before their time. Any projection 
and every demonic expectation concerning you, concerning your family and your loved ones, today, let it boomerang. Let that evil expectation be overturned. Let that demonic entity be arrested. Lift up your voice, clap your hands, command the arrest of every evil that has been deployed in your community, in your family. Any projection of premature death, any projection of untimely death, arrest, override, arrest, override, arrest, override. Rankudala Mataria Messiah, Repanala Mika Duataya, Meika Deri, Rala Mushiti Ande Bakasa, Wapanda Lemi Kutua, Rabaka Deri, Ey, Yakuma na Messiah, Overturn it, Overturn it, Overturn it, Overturn it, Overturn it, Command it to Boomerang. In Jesus' mighty name. There are expectations of the enemy. There are expectations. Even during this Easter, there are some things the devil wants to see happen to you to cause you pain, but let it be, let it be overturned. You know, between the first and the second services, I turned on my TV in the office, and I just turned to CNN, and they had a report in South Africa about a vehicle that fell down the cliff hundreds of meters into the valley and they said there was only one survivor. Everybody else died. Just this Easter. Any demonic expectation to take any life connected to you and to this altar before your time, let it be overridden. And I was asking myself, of all the many things happening in Africa, what they reported was a vehicle that fell from a cliff and nobody survived. Every evil expectation and every demonic prophecy waiting to happen today, we override it, we arrest it, we overturn it. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice, clap your head, overturn it. Wherever your name has been taken, wherever your picture has been taken for evil, this Easter, let it backfire. Let it backfire. Let it boomerang. Let it be overturned. In the name of Jesus, we decree according to the word of the Lord. It shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. Their expectations will not stand, neither shall it come to pass. Override it. Overturn it. Override it. Overturn it. Override it. Overturn it. In Jesus' mighty name, every evil expectation of the enemy concerning our father, the Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams, and every evil prophecy, every long-term plan of the enemy, any time-sensitive projection of the enemy to cause him pain, to bring him down, by the power of the name of Jesus, we decree, let it pass over him, let it pass over him, let it pass over him. Clap your hand. Command that evil to pass over. Let it pass over. Let it pass over. It shall not stand. It shall not come to pass. The expectations of the enemy will not stand. Neither shall it come to pass. Overturn it. Overturn it. Overturn it. Overturn it. Rataranama peria kasaya. Bentula madiku maria wande. Abaika duri mitaya. Rala mushita yanake. In the name of Jesus, we overturn it, we overturn it, we overturn it, we overturn the evil expectations of the enemy. Who is he that decrees a thing and brings it to pass when the Lord has not appointed it? Lamentations chapter 3 verse 37. Who is he? And people have the audacity to predict what they believe must happen. Let it fall to the ground. Let it fall to the ground. Let it be overridden. Let it boomerang. Let it turn on them. Lift up your voice. Clap your hands. Command every evil expectation, every demonic prophecy, every negative prediction. Over 10, over 10, over 10, over 10. Clap your hands. Over 10 it. 
Raparara matu watasaya. Mentuli mikatari. Rapanda wande. Abai kasaya. Mayadunki satarias. Let it be of ten. In the name of Jesus the Christ. The son of the living God. Tell somebody one more prayer. Any evil expectation concerning Ghana. Let it backfire. We are going for our election this year like many others. About 50% of the world is having elections this year. We are approaching election. Every demonic expectation that something will go wrong and trouble will start in Ghana, let that evil be overturned. Let that evil expectation backfire in the name of Jesus. A few years ago, some of you were here. You read and heard on the news that Ghana is next for some major trouble. I think there was one, I think it was Burili also that was coming from far away. They say Ghana is next. Looking at the statistics, they said people are going to die in multitudes because they said COVID was coming. COVID has come and gone. You are still here. Every other plague will pass over you. Any new design of the enemy to bring trouble, it will, it will pass over. Say, oh God, let evil pass over Ghana. Let every projection of the enemy pass over our nation. In the name of Jesus, clap your hands and force it. Come on, peace. Rakadala materi mikitaya. Rapunda wasaya. The expectations of our enemies will not stand. We prophesy peace. We decree peace before, during, after the elections. Let the will of our God be done. Let the plan of God come into manifestation. Let evil be far away from us. And let the glory of our God be revealed. In the name of Jesus. Kadama Wasaya. Their predictions will not stand. Those that God himself has appointed to the various offices, we pray that they will be elected without confusion and that the will of our God shall be done in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together and give him praise. Hallelujah. You may be seated for a moment. If there's anybody here for the very first time, today is your first time worshiping with us. You are very special. Today is not a Sunday, but it's part of our Easter convention. Maybe today is your first time worshiping with us. We want to acknowledge you and we want to extend to you a right hand of fellowship. Is there anybody here for the very first time? Can you give me a wave? Anybody here for the first time? Anybody here for the first time? It means that you and I didn't invite anybody. Praise the Lord. You just came by yourself. Next time, invite somebody because the Easter story is for everybody. Amen. Is there anybody that I didn't see? I think we are good. Okay. God bless you. Please come forward. Can you please come forward? Today is your first time. You are very special. Can you please come? Are you clapping for them? Thank you so much for coming. And as you heard the message, you heard about the Passover. Passover is for those who are under the blood and for those who are in the house. Maybe you are not under the blood. You are not born again. And you say, today, I want to give my life to Jesus. You can come forward also. You can come forward also. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be under the blood and I want to be in the house. Anybody, I want to give my life to Jesus. You can come join them. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. We welcome you on behalf of the Archbishop Nicholas Dr. William, the father of the house, and we pray for you that this Easter will be your Easter of great celebration and great testimonies, that God will do something in your life and God will give you a brand new testimony in the name of Jesus. Like I said, we want to get to know you. So I have a brother behind you, right behind you. Please go with him. He has some information for you, and then you come back into the service. Right behind you, please go with him. Put your hands together for them as they go. Hallelujah. Are you clapping for them?
Amen. Thank you very much. Today is Friday, the Good Friday service. Tell somebody there will be no service tonight. Say it and hear it yourself. Tell them if you come tonight, you will be on your own. Hallelujah. There's no service tonight. There are all kinds of different information going around. There's no service tonight. And tomorrow you have free time to spend with your family. Also, there'll be morning glory 7 to 8, 830. And then on Sunday, we have the Resurrection Sunday services, 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. Something will change in your life. Amen. The Resurrection Sunday is Sunday. And then on Monday, we have the Family Fun Games. It's an opportunity for us to come together and have fellowship one with the other. Amen. Can you roll the um, Family Fun Game clip, please? Cards, Owari, Ludu, Scrabble, Monopoly, Bible Quiz, and lots of food for the whole family. So join us Monday, the 1st of April from 9 a.m. and have a thrilling blast with the whole family. ACI Family Fun Day. Be there. Hallelujah. So Family Fun is on Monday. So when we finish on Sunday, we'll crown it all on Monday. So please come. Don't stay home. Come and let's build the family together. Amen. Let's build a family together. Let's bond as a family. Amen. Shall we please stand? Thank you so much for your patience and for your commitment. And may God give you double blessing for your commitment to the work of God. Let's worship as we invite the Bishop Emeritus James Kukusa to please close us. Let's lift up our hands and pray. Father, we have heard your word. And this is the word of the Lord. In Exodus chapter 5, your word says, Pharaoh said unto Moses and the people, Who is that your God that I should obey his voice? Father, in the end, Pharaoh drowned. And your people lived. I declare by your word. Any pursuing spirit. Malutu kapadu sapata satire. Anything challenging your God. In this Easter and resurrection. I declare over your life. That the same power that raised Christ from the dead. Shall quicken your mortal body. Shall quicken your marriage shall quicken your business, shall quicken your career, shall quicken everything God has given you. I declare you will not die, you will live. And those who hate you will go down. In the name of Jesus, I bless you and everything God has given you. I declare this Easter an Easter of open doors and the visitation of God. In the name of Jesus, I call you blessed. And no man can call you curse. 
Let it be before God. Let it be before men. In Jesus' name, amen. When we do something, heaven responds. I feel like something is about to happen in this building. We come on the grounds of the redemptive blood of Jesus. How do you know you're better now? <laughs> there are miracles. <laughs> I said there are miracles in this place. Action Chapel International Easter Convention 2024. From Wednesday, March 27th to Monday, April 1st. Hosted by His Eminence, Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. Special guest speaker, Bishop Michael Pitts. I feel the Holy Ghost moving in this place. Services Wednesday, March 27th, 7 p.m. Thursday, March 28th, 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Friday, March 29th, 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. Sunday, March 31st, 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. Let that be a recovery and a compensation. Family Fun Day on Monday, April 1st from 10 a.m. Venue is ACI Prayer Cathedral. Easter Convention 2024. Invite all your friends and